Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tuomo and in this video I want to introduce you to one of my most used and favorite web developer tools and that is Chrome DevTools. I use Chrome DevTools on a daily basis and I pretty much couldn't live without it. So after this video you will have a good understanding about the features of Chrome DevTools and things you can do with them. And you will also learn some concrete tips and things that you can start doing with DevTools right away. And I dare to say that knowing these things and using them will actually make you a better web developer. So let's jump into the computer and get started. Okay, so I have my website open up over here and we are actually gonna use DevTools to inspect this site and demonstrate some of the features that Chrome DevTools has. So first of all, let's open up the DevTools. And you can do that by clicking the Command Alt I. And you should see something like this. And the first feature I want to show you is actually inspecting elements in the DOM. So I have over here on the left hand side a view of the DOM elements. And I can actually select one element from the page. So if, for example, we wanted to inspect this element over here, all we have to do is right click it and click inspect. And it will actually expand the DOM tree and you will see that element over here. Whenever you hover an element inside the element inspector, it will be highlighted on the page. So this is very handy. You can also see all the attributes that all these elements have and you can actually also add some attributes. So for example, if we wanted to uh, change the color of this uh, header element, all we have to do is double click over the element tag and we can start typing. So we could say, for example, style equals color red and press enter and it will automatically apply that attribute for that element. And as we can see, the header is now red. So this is very handy if you want to just quickly test out some things and you will see the results on the page right away. You can also see all the styles that any element has. So for example, if we wanted to see what styles this uh, paragraph element has, we can click it and then go to the computed tab and if we scroll down, we can see all the styles that this element has. And we can also see this box model thing for this element, which displays the margin border padding and the content sizes over here. So the next feature I use a lot is the JavaScript console. And I have it open down here. Whenever you get JavaScript errors or warnings, they are displayed down here and that's very handy and very important information when debugging. Also, if you, for example, log some statements with the console log statement in JavaScript, all those will be displayed in this JavaScript console also. Another thing that I often do is test my JavaScript selectors inside the JavaScript console. So if I have a jQuery selector or vanilla JavaScript selector, I can actually type it in to the JavaScript console and I can see that if it's working or not. So let's say for example that I wanted to select this header over here. Let's add a class for that. So I do the same thing as we did with the style attribute. I just add class equals test class like this. So now if we want to select it, we can actually type the selector inside the console. like this and we can see that we get returned an HTML collection that has the header element inside of it. So that selector is working. But for example, if we try to get an element with class that doesn't exist, we can see we get an empty collection returned. So this is very handy if you want to test out your uh, selectors and as you might guess, we can also execute JavaScript in this console. So if we wanted to, for example, change the page title, we could do this. Like this. And we can see that the title is changed up here. And changing the title is just an example. We could also, for example, click a link. So let's say we wanted to click this block link 
I'm going to just inspect it. And I'll actually add an ID for this so it's easier for us to select it in this example. Like this. And then I could type in to the console the following. Like this. And now when I press enter it should trigger a click event for this blog link and we should be directed to the blog page. Like this. So it's that easy to run any JavaScript on the side through the JavaScript console. Next thing that I use a lot is actually over here the network tab. Let's click it open and inside here we can see all the requests that the browser makes. So right now we have a bunch of requests over here and we can filter these uh, by type by clicking the XHR requests or just the JavaScript files or image files or even web sockets for example. We can filter these out up here. I click the alt tab open and let's actually go to the front page and I'll refresh this. So now I refresh the page and we can see that we get a bunch of requests over here. So I'll click the XHR and let's take a closer look on one of these requests. So all we have to do is click the request and it opens up a new view and go to the headers tab and inside here we can see all the information about the request. We get the URL, uh, the request method, the status code it returned, some headers, response and request headers. And then if we had a post request, we would actually see the data that was sent with the request. So let's take a look at the other requests if we have any data over here. Okay, so here we have a post request made to Google Analytics and if we scroll down we can actually see some other fields here. There were the request headers. So we have some query string parameters and also the request payload. So this is a good way to inspect if the request is sending the data that you actually want it to send. Then we have these other tabs here. So in this preview tab we can see the preview of the response and the response tab shows the a raw version of the response. So let's take a look at another request since this didn't have any response. Okay, so here we have a request that actually returned some response and looks like it's a JavaScript file that it returned. And in the preview window we can see a preview, preview of it and in the response tab actually the raw response. Then in the initiator tab we can see the request call stack and find out which part of the code actually triggered this request. And in the timing tab we can see timing information about the request. So here for example we have the request response. So the request was sent and then it was waiting the server or the response for 1.58 milliseconds and then the actual content download took 3.02 milliseconds. And the last thing about the network tab is if we right click one of these requests and go to the copy, we can actually copy the request as fetch or as node fetch or as CURL. So let's click the copy as node JS fetch and I'll switch to the Visual Studio code and paste in. We can see that we get the request as node JS fetch code. Next thing is something I use when I'm testing out the website and that is changing the network conditions. It's always good to test out the web page with different connection speeds. So that's something we can test out with DevTools. So if we go up here we have the more network conditions button and it opens up this new tab and we can actually set the network throttling to fast 3G, slow 3G or some very slow connection or even offline. So let's click the slow 3G and I'll refresh the page and let's see what happens. So as we saw it loaded the page pretty slow and we saw what it would look like with the slow connection. So I'll just select the no throttling and refresh the page. 
Next thing I want to show you is taking a screenshot with DevTools and it is very handy if you have a big web page or a long, long page and you want to take a screenshot of the whole page. So I'll actually go to the blog tab over here and as we can see here is a bunch of blog posts so this is a very long page. And if I want to take a screenshot of the whole page, all I have to do is click Command Shift P. It opens up this uh, command palette and I'll type in screenshot. And I select the capture full size screenshot. So this will take a screenshot of the whole page. Uh, we can also capture screenshots of nodes or just the visible area or we can select a specific area from the website which we want a screenshot of. But now let's click the capture full size screenshot and it downloads a PNG file. Let's open it up. So here is the image and if you scroll down we can see that this is an image of the whole page. And it was that easy, we didn't have to do any uh, cutting and pasting just one command and it takes a screenshot of the whole page. DevTools is also great when we are using local storage inside our app because it enables us actually display and view the contents of local storage. So to do that we can go to the application tab. If you don't see it here click the arrow over here and select it from there and it opens up the local storage explorer. So we can see down here we have the storage and the local, local storage of the website. And we can try adding an item to the local storage with the JavaScript console and see if we can display it up here. So let's add an item to the local storage. Like this and press enter. And we can see that it appears in the local storage. Of course you are not using local storage like this, adding it from the JavaScript console, but you could do it in your JavaScript code. But for the test purposes in this example, uh, we can also add it like this. So from the application tab and then the storage and local storage, you can display the pages local storage contents. And last thing I want to show you is something called device mode. And that can be toggled up here toggle device toolbar. And when we click that, we get the device mode activated and we can actually use the web page as we would on a mobile device. So we have these touch gestures and we can also change the size by tracking here. Or we can click here and actually select a specific device we want to emulate. So let's say Galaxy S5 it makes the screen the size of that device and we can test how the web page would look on Galaxy S5. And we can even change the orientation by clicking up here and we can see how the page looks on different orientation. Okay, those were some of my favorite features of Chrome DevTools. I really hope you liked this video and actually learned something new from it. Let me know in the comments What's your favorite feature of Chrome DevTools? But that's all for now. If you're not already, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.